Amen. God bless you. Numbers 10, 29 through 32. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Ragul, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying into the place which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are encamped in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will he do unto thee. We make decisions in our life all the time. Every day we make decisions. Some decisions are very small. Some decisions are very, very large. And they are sometimes life-changing decisions that we make with, with huge implications on our life. We must make sure that we are being led by the hand of God and the counsel of God in every decision that we make. The most important decision that we will ever make is concerning our daily walk with Jesus. We must do everything that, everything that we have to to ensure that we do not stray from the direction, the correction, and the understanding of our God. We have to make sure that we stay in His truth. This is a decision that Hobab is about to make. And so I want to preach to you this morning on my message that I've entitled, The Decision of Hobab. The Decision of Hobab. God, I ask you in this house, let your spirit speak to each and every one of us here. Let us hear, God, what the spirit would say to the church. Touch us, God, in this house today and minister to us, I pray. Anoint us to hear the word and receive it, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. How many of you remember reading of Hobab? He, he's not a big figure in the Bible. This is the only time that we ever find this man, Hobab, mentioned in the Bible. The only time. There's no other place in the Bible that he specifically, individually is mentioned. He's just somebody that as you're reading through your Bible and you pass through this portion of the Bible, that you come across this instance where he is mentioned concerning a decision that he has to make with Moses. I doubt that there are any of us here that have really taken notice that if I were to say, oh, Bob, you would say, oh, yeah, I know where I know about him. I know. No. If I say uh, David, we know David. If I say Absalom, you might know Absalom. If I if I make different mentions of names in the Bible, you might remember them. But oh, Bob, probably not. Probably not. I've never taken notice of him. He's never anything that I've really ever considered in my Bible. He's just another name, just another face, just another mention of somebody that was in the Bible. But Hobab is the son of Jethro. And in the passage that I just read to you, Jethro is actually called Ragul. They, they use different names. I, don't ask me. But, but Moses' father is Jethro. And so Hobab is his son. So Hobab is the brother-in-law of Moses. Hobab knew Moses from the time that Moses spent with his family while they lived in the desert. Moses had married Hobab's sister, Zipporah. So, so Moses marries his sister. They are brother-in-laws. Moses lived with Jethro's family. How long do you think Moses lived with Jethro's family in the desert? Forty years. Forty years. My wife and I, on September uh, 7th, celebrated 31 years together. Forty years 
31 years is a long time. 40 years is a long, long time. I, I won't say that when we've been married 40 years, I promise, I won't say that. But he lived there for 40 years in Jethro's family. He had become just one of Jethro's many people that lived on his land and worked a job for him. Moses did. Moses was a shepherd and he worked for Jethro and he had settled down into his cushy little life doing the things that he did, being married to his wife and raising his family. Normal, everyday life for 40 years. He had become just another member of Jethro's family and living in Jethro's way of life. When God called Moses... He upended that entire family. When God called Moses, he, he, he upended that whole, that whole thing. Moses left his wife and his sons with Jethro and their family, and he himself went back to Egypt. Jethro was now the caretaker of his own daughter and his grandsons. Moses' absence had a greater change than these people would ever understand. The change that would happen was greater than these people ever, ever understood. When Moses left, he left just as Moses. When Moses returned, he had over a million people with him. He didn't just go down to Egypt to get a couple of people. He went down to Egypt, and when he came back to Jethro, he's got over a million people with him. Wow, Moses. Yeah, you just left us however long ago. And you, you, you told us you were going to go down there, and you're going to set those people free. God sent you down there to set the... Wow. <laughs> Look at this sea of people. When he returned, he returned with the entire nation of Israel. Now, Hobab came to be with the Israelites when Jethro himself came to Moses in the desert. Jethro comes. This is where Hobab first comes to meet the Israelites. In Exodus 18 and verse 5, it says... And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses in the wilderness, where he encamped at the Mount of God. Jethro came out to meet Moses, and he brought Moses his wife, and he brought Moses his two sons. So here, here's, here's your wife and your sons, and wow, wow, impressive here, Moses. I, I know what you said that God sent you to do, but you know, Every one of us have a little bit of doubt about, you know, what that's going to really mean. And, and, and we think about it, but wow. Wow. He came out there. He, he, he brought, Jethro brought his entire family too. Jethro stayed with Israel from this time forward. He lived among the Israelites and he became one of them. He did Jethro did. Now, remember, he's, he's, he's lived in his life. Moses has been a part of his family. Now Moses is gone. He brings them back. Now Jethro's with him. Right. Now Jethro's doing whatever Moses says. Now Jethro's doing whatever the Israelites do. Jethro and his family are doing whatever all of those people, that million plus people, he's just in that sea of people. That's where he lives now. That's what he does. Where, wherever these people go, Jethro and his family are going to go with them. His life is now engulfed in the same pursuit that these Israelites have. Jethro is in that place. Now, this was a dramatic change for Jethro and his family. Jethro, Hobab, the, the whole family that they had, they had always lived in one place. They had a house, they had a farm, they had animals. They, it, it was their land, their place. They were uprooted from that, and now they don't have their land and their place. They don't have a home that they live in anymore. They've got a tent. 
They got to pitch the tent when, when camp uh, sets and they got to break camp and put everything up and move when, when camp moves. They, they, they don't have that anymore. They're, they're, they're in a whole new realm of life. They're, they're doing things altogether different than they ever did before. But that's not really the big change for Jethro and Hobab. That's not really the big change for Jethro and his whole family. The big dramatic change for them came in the fact that they had a different religion now than what they, they had before. Jethro was a Midianite, and, and the Midianites worshipped false gods. They, they had no understanding of the true God. They didn't really know. The Midianites didn't. Now, Jethro may have known a little bit because Moses, I'm sure, spoke to Jethro and told Jethro about the God that he served. But they didn't really understand the true God. I, I did a little research on the Midianites and what they did, what their religion was. And it says here, the Midianites, through their apparent religio-political connection with the Moabites, are thought to have worshipped a multitude of gods, including Baal Peor and the Queen of Heaven, Ashtoreth. That's what they worshipped. That's what Jethro's family grew up knowing, understanding, and worshiping. When Moses met Jethro, he recounted all that God had done in freeing them. He told them about all of the plagues. He told them about all of the miracles God done. He told them about, about how God had brought them out of Egypt. I, I know he told them uh, of all of those miracles. And then he told them the greatest miracle of all. We got to that Red Sea and we had nothing but, but danger in front of us and danger behind us. And you should have seen it, Jethro, when God came down himself and he stood between us and the armies of Egypt. We had light on our side, but on their side, it was nothing but total darkness. You should have seen it when God told me to stretch my staff out over the Red Sea and it parted and we walked across on dry ground. Everything that God had done, everything that God had done, Moses is recounting to Jethro. It says in Exodus 18, 9 through 11, this is what Jethro had to say about it. And Jethro rejoiced for all of the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh and hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now, now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods for in the things wherein they dealt proudly, he was above them. Jethro said, now I know. I, I'm standing here and I'm looking at a sea of people. I'm looking at a multitude of people that you said were going, and I know the only way that they can come out. And, and word has even gotten to me about how God did these things. But it's amazing to stand here and look at now I know that all of those gods back in Midian where I served and all of those gods back in the place that I knew about, now I know they are false gods. They are not real gods. Now I know that the Lord, he is God and there is none else. Now, now I know. Jethro can see the results of the power of God. When Moses left, it was just him. And now standing before him is, is a <laughs> one million former slaves. The reality of God's delivering power is undeniable to Jethro. And he makes that statement. These are the people that look what God has done. Now I know. Now I know. Everything about Jethro's former religion is now forsaken by Jethro, now forsaken by Hobab, now forsaken by their whole family. They turn their hearts, their lives towards God. Jethro decides to follow Israel, and he makes his life entwined with, the, with Israelites. He follows the God of Israel and now forsakes the other gods of his past. Now, this religion that he has is so totally different from the religion of his past. You see, when, <clears throat> when Hobab, Jethro, all of the people, his family, when they would go to church, when they would go to worship, 
They would bring whatever offering that they had. They would do whatever sacrifices. They would do whatever sacraments were necessary to meet the needs that their religion said they had to meet to their God. But what really happened in that place was nothing. They brought a sacrifice. They burned a sacrifice. They, they did these things that the religion told them to do. But nothing ever really happened. They, they, they didn't ever really see miracles. There was nobody ever really healed. There was no, no, nothing really ever happened. The, the, that carved piece of wood. you got to understand. They bowed themselves down to a carved piece of wood that was usually overlaying with some kind of metal. Gold or silver or whatever it was. They bowed themselves down and asked that piece of wood to do something for them and so all of the dedication all of the devotion everything that they did all those years to something that was so dry something that never gave them anything something that never ever ever prospered them in any way whatsoever now Jethro's in a whole different religion he's in a whole different place Everything about this is different because when Jethro walks into that place and Jethro begins to move among these people, it's immediate that he can see the power and the presence of God everywhere. Everywhere. Now, I, I remember when I was over here and I was doing this thing and I, I was in this way and I, I served God this way. I, I thought this was the way to do it. I thought that was the way, and, but nothing ever happened. I never saw the supernatural. I never experienced anything that ever happened to me or anybody else that I ever knew that, that it ever happened that way. But I got over here and I walked into the camp of the Israelites and every morning, these people wake up and there's food out in front of them. There's a miracle every morning. I, 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 I can look up, physically look up, and I can see a cloud that, that goes with them wherever they go. I, I physically can watch and see that thing turn to a pillar of fire by night. I watch that thing lead them wherever they go. I, I'm in their camp and I can see the hand of God moving. I physically, personally have experienced it myself. I, they stood at the Mount Sinai. They looked up at the mountain and it was on fire. And they heard voices and thunders and rumblings. And they said, Hobab and Jethro, look at this. And they say, you know what? That was a bunch of garbage back there. That, that, was, that was a bunch of st uh, uh, stuff that, that, that didn't mean a thing because all of that is false. None of that is real. This is real. Yeah. I can see the power of God everywhere. Everywhere. It, it, was, it, it was so undeniable to Jethro and Hobab. Before it was just going through the motions of religion. But now they're bathed in the supernatural. And everywhere that they turn, everywhere they turn, there is the activity of God among them. Every day they wake up to those miracles. Jethro and his family are seeing these things, and, and they've never seen these things before. They've never seen God as active in people's lives like this. They, they've never heard God speak before. They've never, that none of those idols ever said a word. Nothing. But now they're, they're hearing voices and thunderings and and they're watching these things happen. Miracle after miracle, constantly Jethro and his family could see the touch of the supernatural. The presence of God moved through their camp. God himself, God himself was in their camp. Wow. Is that amazing? God himself is in their camp. How many times did Jethro give obedience and, and, and bow himself down to all of those other things that were a part of his former religious life and come up empty and now do, do you see the dramatic difference in this man's life yeah. it was not only that god was in their their midst it was not only that god moved among them that jethro and hobab saw but it was that god himself gave them the word God 
took two tablets of stone and wrote with his own finger on those two tablets of stone, the law. And he said, here's the law, live by. Now, back where he came from, all these wise men came up with rules and things that they thought people ought to do. But, but here, God, with his own finger, writes the law. God speaks to Moses and tells him, do these things, don't do these things. These things please me, these things don't. If you want to worship me, if you, if you love me and you desire to obey me, do these things. Oh, could, could you imagine? That'd be amazing. God just says, all right, here's my law. Here it is. Take it. Do these things. Hobab and, and Jethro had never, never had anything like that before. Now, this is an important thing. I, I want to take a moment here. This is an important part that we've got to understand today. In the place where the real God is, you're going to find the activity of the supernatural. <laughs> you can go to any old dry religion, but that's just what it is. It's religion. It, it's, just, it's just religion. I want to be in the place where the power of the supernatural God is active, where, 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 where God is constantly moving. That is the place that I desire. That is the place that is the true place to be. You can look and you can, you can, you can measure and you can do all of these things, but the end result is where God is, where God is, that's where truth is. That's the second part of it. There is the power of the supernatural. There are things that God does, and you can be in that presence, and you can be in that power. You can watch God heal. We could raise our hands in this house today of all of those that have been healed in this place, and, and it would be almost every person in this house that God has healed, or that God has delivered, or that you have had an issue in your life or a need that God ministered to. Every one of us have had the power of God move on us, and we have been baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in other tongues we have experienced that ourselves we know that the power of God it constantly moves in here but as with Moses it's the power of God and the truth of God's Word that have to be together you cannot just have all spirit and not have with it the truth as well God will never go outside his word God will never do something or ask you to do something or tell you to do something that is not found in this word nothing should ever happen in the house of God that is contrary to the Word of God in fact Paul talking to the Corinthian church he said the spirit cannot say that Jesus is accursed it can't do it that's a false spirit it has to line. whatever happens in the spirit has to line up to the word we don't follow after signs we don't do that we don't follow after watching great miraculous things happen no we don't do that we stay in the word if you stay in the word and you love Jesus, then the signs just happen. They follow the believer. The believer doesn't follow the sign. I, I want to nail that down because we, we desire the healings. We desire the miraculous. We want the miraculous. That is the natural outflow of the presence of God. When God comes in, anything can happen. Anything can happen. But we've got to make sure there's a balance of, of spirit and truth. The Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. We've got to have that. And so for, for Hobab and for Jethro, they have spirit and truth. Now, Jethro's family had a distinct advantage as well. They had a very distinct advantage. Jethro's family is, is kin to Moses. So whatever Moses hears from God, whatever God tells Moses, whatever, whatever experience is happening there, they're right there in the know of it. They're, they're, they're right there in the know of what's going on. Moses can explain things to Jethro and his family because they're a part of his family. 
And so they're around that atmosphere. They're around that, that, that place. There are things that you gain just by being with somebody that is used of God in a great way. Yeah. To be around powerful men and women in the gospel, to be around them, there is something that you catch from them. You, yeah. you receive yeah. just of being around. And, and Jethro and his family, Moses was so close to God. The Bible says his face shone. Yeah. They saw that. When Moses went out to the people, he put the veil over his face. When he's with his family, he didn't got that veil. They saw it. Jethro, Hobab, they, they see that. They're, they're around Moses. Israel was a nation that God had set his affection on and had exalted them above all of the other nations. Moses told Israel this as he was giving them the final instructions in Deuteronomy 4, 6 through 8. It says, Keep therefore and do them, for this is the wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, and, what, and who hath God so nigh unto them? as the Lord our God is in all these things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all of this which I set before you this day? Moses is saying to, to Israel, and he's saying to, he's saying to Jethro and Hobart, he's saying to everybody there, do you realize what you got? Do you understand what you have? What other nation has God gone out and said, I'm going to take all of you out of slavery and do great and mighty miracles? I, what other people have, has, 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 has there been such a powerful presence around? Name me the nation. Tell me the nation that I have exalted like I've exalted you and done for you the things that I've done for you. Do you understand what you have? What other nation have I gone to and expressly wrote with my own finger the law and given it to them? I have exalted you. Why? So that all of the other nations that are around will look at you and say, wow, wow, I want to be one of them. Yes. I want to join them. Yes. I want their God to be my God. My God has done nothing for me. My God never, never even made a mosquito bite stop itching. Hasn't done a thing for me. But look what their God did. I want to be with them. I want to be with them. And that's why God exalted. And Moses is telling him, do you understand what you have here? Could you be in a better situation? What, what more could you ask for, Israel? What more could you ask God to do? What, what other? Is, is, this not, is this not everything that, that I've brought you out and that I'm taking you to? A land so great and so wonderful? That Look at what you have. Hobab had a decision to make. He was now old enough to decide what he was going to do and what, what he was going to live like. Was he going to continue with what his family had come to know? Or was he going to go back to something that he was taken out of? Numbers 10, 29 through 32, our opening scripture. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Ragul, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. We are journeying into a place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart into my own land and, my own kindred, and to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the, in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou wilt go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will he do unto thee. Moses reminded Hobab 
that they were on their way to a place that God had promised them. We're not just out here wandering in the desert, but there is a promise that God has given us. There is a journey of, ahead of us. Hobab, Hobab looked at everything that God had done. Hobab looked at everything that God had blessed those people with. Hobab knew and understood and saw for himself the power and the majesty of God. But Hobab, in doing this, had never set his affection on God. His dad had, perhaps his mother, others in his family. We are not told specifically. But we do know of Hobab when he stood at this decision point, looked at this and said, I'm going back to my old way of life. I'm going back to the things that I had formerly. I want to go back to my old land. I want to go back to my old house. I want to go back to the old things that I had before. Hobab had not set his heart on God. What does it take for some people to realize how good they have it in God. What does God have to do to get the attention of people and make them realize that this is the only way to live? What does God have to do? Where do you miss the point? Where do you not see that all of the mercy and grace of God is constantly poured out? That His love and affection is constantly towards us. There are times that we make mistakes. There are times that we do stupid things. There are times that we disobey the Word of God. But God never turns His back on us. God brings to us conviction for the things that we have done. Do you understand that the conviction of God is a good thing. That the conviction of God is the love and mercy of God saying to you, don't stay in the place that you're at. What mother and what father would ever allow their child to disobey and be rebellious and be all kinds of, of bad things and not say to them, turn from the way that you're living. It's, it's a mother or a father that does not care about their child. Why? Because they know that their child will end up down the road in a very bad place. And God's love constantly reaches to us. Yes. Turn, turn, turn. What does it take for God to do for some people? What does it take for God to do for you, Hobab? What do you have to see? What is it that you need God to do to make you realize that it's not better out there? It's not better in the past life. You can't go there and find it better than what God is doing for you right here. You're saturated in the power. You see and hear the voice of God. You know what it was like there. You know that there was nothing that you ever experienced back there, nothing, that it was empty, it was dead, it was dull, it was dry. What this man is deciding is going to have ramifications for the rest of his life. Sister Mary Irene, he doesn't get to make that choice again. He gets to make that choice right now. I'm at a crossroad. What way am I going to go? Am I going to follow after God and his people? Or am I going to go back to my old way of life? The, the, the decision that he has to make at that time is going to change him forever. But it will not only change him. It's going to change him and every child that will come after him. He may have children right now. He may have sons and daughters. He may have grandchildren at this moment. We do not know. But we do know this, that, that his decision is going to affect him and his entire lineage thereafter. This lineage will either grow in the, in the, in the beauty of God. As Moses said, what God has planned for us, he will do for you. You're going to be just like one of us. You're going to walk just there will be no differentiation between Hobab and the Israelite you will be one of us every blessing that God has every mercy that God wants to give everything that God wants he will give it to you Hobab don't turn away from God don't go back to your old life don't go that way Hobab make sure the decision that you make today make sure that the thing that you're about to do is the right thing don't do it by the judgment of your own eyes. Don't do it by the judgment of your own mind. We deceive ourselves. But make sure you listen to the voice of God. Make sure you look at what is really happening. 
and don't be deceived because what you're about to do and the decision that you're about to make is going to change your life forever. 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 What did Hobab do? What did he do? It doesn't say. We don't know. Let me ask you something here today. You, you be Hobab's advisor. Crystal, you stand next to Hobab today. And you look Hobab in the face and you tell Hobab what he's supposed to do. What would you tell Hobab? You're looking at this thing right now. You know what he came from. You know the life that he had formerly. You see the things that God has done for Israel. And, and you know, you know the future of the things that God is going to do for Israel. What are you going to tell Hobab to do? Oh, Hobab, dude. You remember the parties we had back there? Man, that was, that was a time. You remember, remember the bars we went to? You remember the drugs we did? You remember the, you remember the women we chased? You remember going, going to those temples and the things that we did there? You remember all that thing, all that whole Bob? Yeah, yeah. How good was that to your life? Where did that bring you? Look, Hobab, what you have. Look what's in front of you, Hobab. What would you tell Hobab to do? Could I ask you this morning? Every one of us stand at the road of decision. Every one of us stand there day to day deciding which way are we going to go. What will I do? Do I, do I want to walk with God? Was it always easy for Israel? No. No. I'm not here to tell you that they walked on sugar canes and ate cotton candy every day. I'm not talking about They had life. But they had God. We stand in the midst of our life and we make a decision every day. What am I going to do? Where will I go? What decision will I make? What would you tell Hobab to do? Would you, would you for a moment listen to your own counsel? Would you tell Hobab to go back to that garbage? Or would you tell Hobab, don't leave the power in the presence of God. Don't walk away from the things that God has for you. Don't leave what God has promised. Don't walk away from this thing. Do you realize what you're giving up? Do you realize what you're letting go of? Do you realize, Hobab, if you turn and you walk away, do you realize everything that's going to be lost in your life? Oh, the treasures. Oh, the things that you're giving up, Hobab. Will you walk? Will you obey? Will you follow? Can we take our own counsel this morning? 